We're in the bar at the hotel where the New Jersey delegation is housed. Donald Trump wrapped up his speech about two hours ago. I'm joined by Charlie Stile, the political columnist for the Bergen Record, Tom Moran, editorial page editor of the Star Ledger, and David Cruz, my colleague in covering politics at NJTV News. I think that this convention was trying to humanize Donald Trump, uh, normalize Donald Trump, soften Donald Trump. Was it successful, David? I'm not sure that they humanized him and softened him enough for the general public. I think for this party, they might have made those who were maybe doubtful that he could be a candidate. I think tonight's speech was, uh, not only is it still probably ongoing right now, but I think the fact that he was able to string together complete sentences that were coherent and he didn't jump off on uh, tangents and digressions, I think that in and of itself was a victory for him and I think that that helped him. Now, will the grand scheme of this whole thing give him a bump next week? I don't think so. Tom, you're not a fan of Donald Trump. Anybody who reads you knows that. But what was your impression of the speech and the convention? Well, the whole thing painted such a horribly dark picture of America in crisis, you know, violence and hordes of Mexicans crossing the border. And there were no solutions presented as much as there was a request for people to have faith that he was going to solve it. He said, when, the day I take office, we'll, he actually said that we will end crime and violence in America. And he didn't have any, there's no proposal to put 100,000 cops on the street. It was one after the other like that. He's going to solve trade. He's going to solve Syria. Uh, it didn't, he didn't say what he would do. Is he intending a big invasion of, uh, to get ISIS in Syria? Uh, it was all, I can handle this. I'm Donald Trump. It was an exercise in narcissism from where I sat. Charlie, your impression? Well, I, I, I thought they, I don't think he really succeeded in humanizing him. I mean, you know, the family came out, they went through their, I, I thought, a fairly routine kind of pageant of praise. Um, and another impression I got, I, in, in the whole um, uh, marketing of, of Donald Trump, before he even got out there, all these hagiographic videos of what a great hero he was, there was no mention. They completely airbrushed this whole Atlantic City episode. This was supposed to be the crown jewel of his empire, and they never mentioned it. And for obvious reasons, because he, it, you know, basically pillaged the town and left it in, you know, left people, uh, you know, workers and investors holding the bag. Uh, a line that jumped out at me tonight early on was from Jerry Falwell Jr., uh, who called Donald Trump the blue-collar billionaire. Uh, they're trying to right. portray Trump as, and he, he said it tonight in his speech, I'm for the little guy. Um, he needs to do that. Did he do it successfully? Did he do it well? Did, uh, do you share my sense that this was an important part of the message they were trying to convey this week. Yeah, I, I do. I, I think that that was a big point that they were trying to press, and they were trying to, uh, you know, smooth over the fact that he's a billionaire plutocrat who really never moved in those circles, and I, I, he was groomed in, um, you know, prep schools. He, he lived in an exclusive enclave in Queens. He's never really mingled with, I mean, he's never, he didn't grow up with the, the surrounded by the ethos of the blue collar. His, his, I think his strategy is he has to win states like Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. He has to appeal to white blue collar workers there. And I think the immigration and the trade pitches that he sort of centered his campaign on the primary are designed to do that. So that is his attempt. I keep coming back to that uh, he didn't propose solutions for anything. He pointed to the problem and painted it in an apocalyptic way uh, and, and said he would solve it. But he didn't say how. Right. I, uh, I'm going to create, I'm, I'm going to be the greatest job creator you've ever seen. We're going to uh, stop crime. Yeah. We're going to destroy ISIS. But uh, it's kind of like a magic potion that he's selling. Uh, how do you see it? I, I think if you had a, a word cloud of the words that he used, uh, believe me, would be 
really large, and now would be even larger. I think that to, to Tom's point, we're going to do it, this now. Yes, everything is going to happen on January 20th of 2017. I think, as far as becoming a the blue collar billionaire, I think it's something that they a narrative that they're trying to push, and whether people will believe that. I think that a certain number of people will. Some will, and it's, the question is, will more than 50% believe that, or will I, only 40% believe that? Well, well, uh, the, uh, the, the whole convention struck me, and the speech, was not an attempt to reach out to do, expand the base. It was really, it was appealing to the people that are in the hardcore Republican base and the people he won over in the primaries. It wasn't in a really larger message. The only unifying theme that was larger than that was, Hillary Clinton is a crook and should be thrown in jail. Right. And there, were, there wasn't really a single policy proposal all week that I heard from Republicans, no initiative, except Hillary's bad. That's what unites them. This, this was a recitation of all his popular slogans that we heard before. It was, there was nothing really, really new. And he, ne he, never, he didn't co uh, connect it to some grander vision of forward there was. I thought there was a vision there. I mean, I, I don't know if he can get there. And, and it could be portrayed as empty promises, but he has a vision. It's of a, a safe, prosperous, uh, Second Amendment respecting <laughs> uh, country. Right. No? no? I, I think that he wants us to believe that there's a vision, and I think there may have been something of a vision articulated in this speech. Whether Donald Trump is in possession of that sort of vision, well, I, I think is yet to be. I, I think a vision politically usually is a roadmap of how to get there. Ronald Reagan, let's cut taxes, let's build the military. He had a vision of how to get there. You know, Barack Obama, let's do national health care and let's you know make deals in the middle and bring. He, he's lacking that. That's uh, right. that's kind of my point. Yeah, that's that, your I, point? It's, it's just that it was a string of slogans. That and with without any kind of I, I said vision or you know or, or any kind of like roadmap or, or it, he didn't take us beyond what we already heard. All right, that's guys. what I thought. I think. Guys, uh, you're top of the line. I guess we'll see you in Philadelphia next week. Yeah. Uh, hope so. Anyway, maybe we can do this again. Thanks sure. very much. I'd be glad. To. All right.